What's up guys welcome back to yet another interesting video. In this video we'll be doing an in-depth comparison between OnePlus 12 with that of iQOO 12. Both are one of the best flagship smartphones right now available in the market. We'll compare things like performance, battery, camera and more. So if you think our video is useful for you guys, make sure to like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Pricing wise, as of now on 19th Feb 2024 with bank offers and other things, you can get iQOO 12 for almost 50 to 51,000 rupees. Wherein OnePlus 12 with bank offers offers you can get it for 63 or 64,000 rupees and in this video that's what we are going to find out whether extra 14k is worth spending on OnePlus 12 over iQ 12. See I've been using both the phones without cover on the back and side frame till now there are not even a single scratch present on both my phones. OnePlus 12 has the protection of Gorilla Glass Victus 2 wherein iQ 12 comes with some scotch sensation protection. I've been using both the phones with the pre-applied screen protector. So there are some minor scratches on the screen protector and I always recommend you guys to use a better protection for the screen it doesn't matter if it's gorilla glass or scotch sensation at the end it's a glass and it can get scratched weight wise there is no difference in both the phones oneplus 12 comes with 208 grams and iq has 200 grams but in general usage you guys won't feel them heavy the weight balancing is too good on both these phones talking about the in-hand grip i personally like the in-hand grip of oneplus 12 compared to iq 12 because of this more curved edges present in the back of oneplus 12. on iq also we do have curved edges but they aren't that much like what we get to see on oneplus 12. so in longer usage you might feel these edges on your hands like if you're watching content and playing games for longer hours oneplus 12 feels more comfortable while watching content for longer hours and even while playing games both have huge camera module so they do wobble when you keep them on the flat surface camera module looks better on iq 12 compared to oneplus 12. oneplus still carries the same design language for their camera module but both of them looks premium both comes with the support of ir blaster oneplus always had a upper hand because they comes with alert slider and that's very useful in day-to-day -day usage oneplus offers curved display wherein iq has this flat panel side bezels are hardly visible on oneplus 12 due to its curved edges if you talk about the bottom and top bezels both are identical on these phones both do comes with the ip rating which is kind of similar oneplus 12 comes with ip65 and iq 12 comes with 64. ip64 and 65 doesn't make much of difference so design and build quality wise both the phones are great you can pick any phone i always prefer curved panel but most of the people don't like curved panel and they opt for flat panels so it's a personal preference guys okay so display wise i would say oneplus offers better experience and specs oneplus 12 supports max resolution of 3168 into 1440 pixels wherein iq 12 supports 2800 into 1260 pixels high resolution will always provide better and sharp images iq always had a upper hand when it comes to refresh rate so iq 12 comes with 144 hertz but it's not like you can use 144 hertz while scrolling your device all the time it will max only provide you 120 hertz 144 hertz is meant for supported games which can be achieved with the help of frame interpolation and both of them have the dynamic refresh rate so it can switch to 1 hertz to 120 hertz depending on the usage right now you can see i'm not touching the phones refresh rate is at 1 hertz soon i touch the screen it will go to 120 hertz so adaptive refresh rate is available on both the phones and it can help you save some extra battery juice on your device when it comes to content watching both of them delivers amazing experience i tested multiple videos like hdr and normal ones with no doubt color reproduction looks exactly same darker areas were properly visible colors were accurate i did not even see oneplus 12 getting more brighter in hdr video playback both had equal brightness oneplus 12 has an advantage that it has a peak brightness of 4000 nits and in general usage you will notice the difference oneplus 12 panel is bright in direct sunlight it doesn't matter you use auto mode or manual brightness mode so overall oneplus 12 provides better experience in reading content outdoor compared to iq 12. sound output is better on oneplus 12 compared to iq 12 in terms of loudness and bass here iq 12 lacks bass but overall both the phones are loud enough stereo speakers are well balanced and you'll obviously enjoy content watching or listening to music even on loudspeakers present on both these phones oneplus 12 has bigger battery with the capacity of 5400 mAh and iq has 5000 mAh and we did a dedicated battery drain test i would say iq has a great battery backup and thermal control it gave us the best SOT amongst all the phones like OnePlus 12, OnePlus 12R, S23 Ultra and even better than nothing phone too. iQ had a massive screen on time of 8 hours and 27 minutes and around 590 mAh per hour consumption 
which is really good in day to day usage charging wise you'll get better charging speed on iQOO 12 as it comes with bigger charging brick of 120 watts and lower battery capacity OnePlus 12 has bigger battery capacity and a smaller charging brick of 100 watt though you won't find much of difference in the charging speed hardly a difference of 5 to 7 minutes or max 10 minutes but here slight advantage which OnePlus 12 brings on the table and that's the support of wireless charging which doesn't come with iQOO 12 okay one of the best part on OnePlus 12 is its haptic feedback which is really great i'm not sure whether these phones have different haptic motor but you will have better experience of haptic feedback on OnePlus 12 compared to iQOO 12 along with that the implementation of haptic feedback on OnePlus is next level like whenever you use your volume slider you can feel the haptic feedback it gradually increases as you increase the volume and decreases whenever you decrease it after that another implementation is in the brightness slider which is too good with the implementation of this o haptic the haptic feedback experience is next level and the implementation is too good on software haptic feels crisp and strong on OnePlus 12 compared to iQOO 12 iQOO 12 doesn't have such implementation of haptic feedback into the OS Software wise, I know most of the users are not fan of Fun Touch OS and even I prefer better software experience on a flagship smartphone. Oxygen OS is well optimized with no bloatware, you get clean and more polished UI on OnePlus smartphones. Both comes out of the box with Android 14, with their particular skins, iQOO has Fun Touch and OnePlus has this Oxygen OS aka Color OS. iQOO 2 comes with some pre-installed applications which you won't see on OnePlus smartphones. Though most of the applications can be uninstalled on iQOO, but I personally don't prefer having bloatware on a premium smartphone. Animation wise, you'll get better experience on OnePlus compared to iQOO 12. On both the phones, you won't find any kind of lags or jitters while using the device. Both of them are well optimized. But here there's a drawback like iQOO will only get 3 years of OS upgrades and 4 years of security patch. Well, in OnePlus 12 will have one extra Android upgrade, so it'll get four years of Android upgrades along with five years of security updates. There is only one advantage which I feel on iQOO and that's layered to customizations. You get better customization options on iQOO compared to OnePlus. OnePlus has some limited customization options, so you can choose iQOO if you want more customization options. I personally don't prefer them, so the customization options present on OnePlus 12 are more than enough for my daily usage. This time OnePlus did improve the fingerprint placement on OnePlus 12, which is very comfortable to use. On iQOO, it's on the lower side, both have optical fingerprint scanner and it's equally fast. Both the phone comes with Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and if you take a look at the benchmark scores, iQOO scores are pretty high. You can see the Geek benchmark application, OnePlus scores are slightly low compared to iQOO 12. If you consider wildlife extreme stress test and guys most of the tests are performed multiple times sometimes we get better stability on iQOO and sometimes on OnePlus 12. You can also take a look at the performance monitoring. Both the phones comes with the UFS 4.0 but you'll see slightly better scores on OnePlus 12 compared to iQOO 12. iQOO 12 scores are 1,54,068 wherein OnePlus 12 scores are 1,57,158 but if you see the difference in the read and write speed OnePlus 12 scores better compared to iQOO 12 wherein read speed on OnePlus 12 is 3,000 292 MB per second, wherein on iQ 12 it's 3063 MB per second. We have made a dedicated video in explaining about UFS 3.1 and 4.0s. You guys should watch the video which is being displayed on the screen. And nowadays people want good performing phones so that they can do gaming. So since the day I have got these phones, I have played BGMI multiple times on iQ and even on OnePlus 12. One thing which I noticed on iQ is we most of the time get to see slight frame drops but that doesn't happen on OnePlus 12. Now with BGMI OnePlus 12 gives constant 80 to 90 FPS if you're doing gaming in 90 FPS. Though both the phones do support 90 FPS and you won't have any kind of issues. But only thing which I liked on iQ 12 is the smoothness while gaming. With no doubt you'll feel iQ performs a lot better but when we see the FPS meter I do notice bit of frame drops on iQ but overall like touch experience, fluidity while doing gaming iQOO does a lot better compared to OnePlus 12. Gaming is always better on flat panels compared to the curved ones. It helps avoid mistouch and that you'll obviously feel once you start gaming on iQOO 12. iQOO 12 also have this frame interpolation but personally I wasn't able to see any game showing me 144Hz in FPS meter. I'm not sure how does it work. I did enable frame interpolation but still I wasn't getting the 144Hz. And one place where iQOO lacks that's the USB 2.0 support which comes with iQOO 12. But here OnePlus 12 comes with USB 3.2 
which is really good. It can be really helpful in many ways like you can use it as a display port, HDMI. It also has the faster data transfer speed. If you want to stream BGMI and other games, you can just connect your device to Elgato. You don't require any third party application. So that's an advantage on OnePlus 12. Now talking about the camera. So both the phones comes with triple camera setup. OnePlus 12 has primary camera of 50 megapixel. Then we get to see 64 megapixel periscope lens, 48 megapixel ultra wide and kind of similar setup on iQOO 12 also. We have 50 megapixel primary, 64 megapixel periscope and 50 megapixel ultra wide. Front camera is 16 megapixel on iQOO 12 but on OnePlus 12 you get to see 32 megapixel front camera. We did click a lot of pictures in multiple scenarios. So these are the pictures which we clicked in ultra wide and I feel I could tries to keep the color tone natural wherein OnePlus tries to boost the colors. If you see the sky colors also, you will get to see more blue color towards the sky but that's not how it looks to the naked eyes. The color reproduction on iQ12 via ultra wide lens is very close to natural. Along with proper dynamic control and HDR, you can see this photo, iQ did a great job and prevented that flare on the sun. But I would say both the devices doesn't have consistency in their camera segment. Sometimes even iQ tries to boost the colors in some scenarios like which you can see in this particular photo. In this particular photo I could did a great job in controlling the dynamic range. Here I could was able to grab more details compared to OnePlus 12 in the same ultra wide. So you can see the inconsistency between both the phones. Sometimes OnePlus does good and sometimes I could does good. When we talk about the skin tone in ultra wide, here I feel OnePlus kept the skin tone close to natural compared to iQ12. iQ12 made the skin tone somewhat looks like whitish color. So as I said, both the devices are not that consistent. Sometimes iQ produces good images and sometimes OnePlus 12. Then we click few samples using the 1x zoom and here with no doubt both the devices did a great job in controlling the dynamic range. Skin tone again the same issue. iQ is making that skin looks slight whitish and overall dynamic range also you can see in these two photos OnePlus had better dynamic control in this particular scenario. And it's obvious guys, every device have different color signs and it also varies depending on the lighting situations. And story continues with the 3x zoom also. The photos clicked with iQ have more details compared to OnePlus 12. We click multiple shots like you can see in this picture. Even if you zoom, you can clearly see more details in the flowing water too. But in some scenarios, it's hard to find out which device produces more details. Then we click some portrait pictures in 3x zoom. And here you can see the results. The dark areas on OnePlus 12 looks pretty bad. But if you see photos of iQ12, they do provide better details. Both the devices have good edge detection and a proper background separation. But if you see slight difference in the portrait photos, we clicked all the photos keeping aperture at 2.0. But you can see OnePlus do have better background blur compared to iQ12. And here are some photos which we clicked in 20x zoom. And here also I did notice iQ has more detail compared to OnePlus 12 even after you zoom in. Talking about selfies, when it comes to skin tone, I could do overexposes the skin, but OnePlus tries to keep the skin natural and you can see under the direct sunlight also, the HDR balance on OnePlus 12 is pretty good. On iQ12, you get to see that flare around the sun. As said previously, sometimes even iQ boosts the color, you can see the sky color in this particular photo, which doesn't look natural at all. When it comes to portrait mode, both the devices does a great job in portrait mode. When we talk about the background separation and edge detection, but when I was clicking portrait mode pictures, I felt iQ was doing better compared to OnePlus 12. Later on, we clicked some photos in the night mode. Here I did notice sometimes OnePlus photos are towards that warm color side, but iQ did pretty well here when it comes to detailing and the darker areas are also pretty well visible compared to OnePlus 12. Even if you see the sky color, iQ was doing pretty well and OnePlus is towards the warm side with less details. If I have to say anything about the camera segment, I feel iQ does better compared to OnePlus 12, mostly in night mode. Otherwise, both the devices are good. Sometimes one device produces good images and sometimes other device. Okay, so here you can see the video recording using the front camera and uh, I'll also keep switching the audio between both these phones actually it's too windy and you guys have a better idea about the audio quality by the way dynamic range and the skin tone i feel 
iQoo is doing better when it comes to front facing recording so iQoo have 1080p video recording using the front camera but here OnePlus 12 supports 4K video recording using the front camera this is the recording from the rear camera you guys can see the video stabilization as said it's too windy here so let's see which device produces the best audio while recording 4K at 60fps using the rear camera you can see the dynamic range and also if I point directly towards the sunlight let's see which device is controlling the sunlight better so I think both are doing good but you guys let me know about the stability part and the colors dynamic range audio etc in the comment section below and now let's talk about the conclusion so in some areas with no doubt oneplus is a lot better but I don't think so those things matters a lot see most people buy high-end smartphones for things like better camera, better performance, good battery life. Other than software experience, I personally did not see that it's worth spending 13 to 14k extra on OnePlus 12. Even in battery backup, iQoo 12 is legend. Though OnePlus 12 is a new device, we might get to see more improvements in upcoming updates. But right now, if you talk about the conclusion, I won't recommend you guys to spend 13 to 14k extra on OnePlus 12 instead of iQoo 12. iQoo 12 is a great deal. Try to get a good offer. And I'm sure you can use that device minimum three years with no issues. But still, you guys let me know what you think. Should you consider buying iQoo 12 or OnePlus 12? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. This is your friend Ashok signing out. See you guys in the next video.